Big news is shaking up the Philippine defense world. After years of anticipation, the contract for the Philippine Air Force's first multi-role fighter jet is finally nearing completion. According to sources within the Department of National Defense, the contract and notice to proceed could be issued before the end of the year. If confirmed, for the first time in modern history, Philippine skies will be guarded by a true fighter jet. But here's the most anticipated question. Which aircraft will the Philippines choose? Will it be the JAS-39 Gripen EF from Saab, Sweden, renowned for its cost-effectiveness, or the combat-tested F-16 Viper from the United States, or the ambitious new generation KF-21 Boramai from South Korea? Let's dig deeper. Once the winning bidder is announced, the DND and the manufacturer have just 10 days to sign the contract. The contract then has to go through government authorization, including financing, legal compliance, and political approval. Only then will the Notice to Proceed, or NTP, be issued. From there, production can begin. This tight deadline demonstrates Manila's commitment to expediting the acquisition. Let's start with the JAS-39 Gripen. Designed for countries with limited budgets, the Gripen is known for its operational costs, which are only about a third of those of the F-16. It can land on highways, be maintained by a small team, and still be capable of carrying out air defense, ground attack, and reconnaissance missions. Saab also offers a soft loan, making it even more attractive given the Philippines' budget constraints. It's no wonder many analysts call the Gripen the most realistic aircraft for the Philippines. Next is the F-16 Viper, the world's most popular fighter. More than 4,600 have been produced. It is used by more than 25 countries and has been tested in numerous conflicts. The F-16's greatest advantage for the Philippines is its interoperability with the United States. As a treaty ally, the Philippines will benefit greatly from full access to the U.S. weapons ecosystem, including the AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missile and modern AEC radar. However, all of these advantages come at a high price. The price of a single F-16 Block 7070 seconds can reach more than 80 million United States dollars, not including high operational costs. The question is, is the Philippines prepared to bear these long-term costs? The final candidate is the South Korean KF-21 Boramai. This 4.5-generation aircraft features limited stealth, an advanced AESO radar, and a modular design that can be continuously upgraded until the 2060s. The Philippines already has a long track record with South Korea through the F-A-50 Fighting Eagle. Therefore, selecting the KF-21 would deepen an existing partnership. But there are risks. The aircraft is still in the development phase. Weapons integration is not yet complete, and delivery timelines could be delayed. With the threat in the West Philippine Sea now a reality, can the Philippines afford to wait? This decision goes far beyond technical matters. By selecting the F-16, the Philippines is affirming its close relationship with the United States, a strong signal to Beijing that the defense alliance remains intact. By selecting the Gripen, Manila would gain greater strategic autonomy at a lower cost, a pragmatic choice for the long term. While the KF-21 would put the Philippines on a technologically advanced path, it carries the risk of gambling on something that isn't fully mature. The West Philippine Sea is a key factor. The new fighter must be able to maintain air sovereignty in disputed territory, countering increasingly aggressive Chinese ships and aircraft. 
The F-16 with AMRAAM would give the Philippines a long-range advantage. The Gripen, with its low operational costs, could fly more frequent daily patrols. Meanwhile, the KF-21, with its lightweight stealth technology, could provide a significant psychological deterrent. Remember, purchasing a fighter jet is just the beginning. The costs of maintenance, infrastructure, pilot training, and the logistics chain can exceed the purchase price. This is where the Gripen offers added value. Its cost per flight hour is significantly lower. In contrast, the F-16 has a well-established global logistics network, while the KF-21 promises industrial cooperation, possibly including technology transfer to the Philippines. The stakes are high. This decision is not simply about replacing aging aircraft, but about the identity of the Philippine Air Force. The fighter jet chosen will be the backbone of air defense until the 2060s. The wrong choice could leave the Philippines trapped in unmanageable operational costs, or conversely left behind in regional technological developments. So the big question remains, will the Philippines choose the cost-effective Gripen, the proven F-16 Viper, or the visionary but risky KF-21 Boramai? One thing is certain, in the next few months, the world will know which aircraft will fly the Philippine Air Force's coat of arms over the Indonesian archipelago. What do you think? If you were the decision maker, which jet would be best for the Philippines? Share your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated on the latest discussions on Philippine defense modernization. See you in the next video.